hello everybody. Um, Roman Oskaletsky is from Gunwa University. I'm now the only obstacle between you and the lunch, so I will try to keep it short. So today I would like to present a method developed in the, our laboratory for, um, uh, for a high resolution mass spectrometry, which is aimed to improve the metabolite identification. So first couple of words, why is double affiliation? So I'm uh, in a branch laboratory uh, of uh, Karolinska Institute. So the main laboratory is a Wheelock, Craig Wheelock's laboratory, which does integrative me metabolite uh, phenotyping. And the core group is based in uh, Sweden. And uh, Dr. Wheelock has a branch laboratory in Gunma. We are still small, but hopefully growing uh, growing larger soon. So first, so the previous two days were based mostly on the established omics, so such as genome, transcriptome, and proteome. And this is the, uh, so these are the omics which are known in, to be involved in the central dogma of uh, molecular biology. However, we should not forget that uh, there is also metabolomes, so small molecules which which are, which, which are in the metabolome and which is most closely related to phenotype. And it indeed has the great influence on the other omics. And if we look at the information flow, so from, from how it goes from DNA to RNA and protein, it's more or less well understood. But uh, how from these polymers, how are they, they related to the small molecules, what is happening every second in uh, our body, it's so this link is a bit less understood, and I would like to elaborate on that and how, how our method helps to bridge this uh, gap. So why accurate metabolite identification is important? So as, as many of the speakers already noticed, so we have uh, analytical methods. So we get uh, raw data from the machines. In case of metabolomics, it can be NMR or mass spectrometry. but what we actually want to do is not to get more and more data, but we want to understand the biology and also link the data of various omics together. And here comes into play the ID of the metabolite, because this is the link how we, how we can connect the data, how we can transform data into the information. So how do we identify metabolites. So this uh, problem is rather old one and there are a uh, number of people and uh, groups working on this and there is even a metabolomic standards uh, initiative paper which kind of tries to st standardize the identification levels of the uh, metabolites. So first we have the unknown compounds so we just have let's say data. Then uh, the level three we have putatively characterized compounds. So, for example, we know the class. Well, what are, what are those? It's a lipid or a sugar. Then, uh, moving up the scale of the metabolite identification from the spectra, we can have a spectral match in the database, such as mass banks, so we can be more sure about the identity of a metabolite. But still, the level one, which is kind of the standard now, is that we have minimum to orthogonal features of the molecule uh, from a con con confirmed from a purchase chemical standard with that in the spectrum. So for example, the accurate mass and retention time. However, metabolites are very diverse and there's large number of very similar ones. So, you, so quite often the retention time and uh, so, two, so, so two parameters are not enough and in our uh, KI GR metabolomics platform, we go a couple of steps farther. So our identification ranks already level one as proposed by the metabolomic standards initiative. So in our case, the rank one, we have the accurate mass and the retention time. Uh, for the rank two, we add the uh, MS-MS match. So it's when we break down the molecule, the fragments are matching and our most highest level of identification, we add also the ion ratio, so the, uh, 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 so the, how, the intensities or the peak areas of the 
of the MSMS fragments. So, so we actually have four identification points for, for one metabolite, and this is quite an improvement uh, from, what, uh, what, from what is currently used. So let me explain how, how our platform works in detail. So we have, uh, in terms of uh, metabolite separation, we use two chromatographies, reverse phase and helic phase in positive and negative ionization mode, and we use Agilent instruments, Agilent QTOF, to perform the experiments. So on the mass spectrometry side, we use uh, three sequential experiments. So these are three scans. So we have one full MS scan at uh, zero electron volts, then we have a second uh, all ion fragmentation scan at 10 and another one at 30 electron volts. So during all ion fragmentation, we take all molecules which are eluting at the time and we break them down in the mass spectrometer to, to get the spectrum. And let me explain so how in detail the data analysis works and how do we get our identifications on the example of n carnosine. So we purchase analytical standard, and here we have the three scans. So the zero electron volts, so here we have our precursor ion, so this molecule uh, is single charged. Then in the, uh, in the 10 electron volt and 30 electron volts, we, we, we have another three fragments, so product ions of this molecule. If we observe the a similar retention time in urine. So again, we can see the pre precursor ion as well as rather small intensity ions of these product ions. As you can see, there are also other molecules saluting at the same retention time. However, when we extract these uh, ion chromatograms from the mass spec data, so here we see the N acetylcarnosine standard. So here we see the precursor ion and the three ion chromatograms. And here the same is done for the urine. So when we compare uh, the masses, so match masses are matching, retention time is also virtually, uh, it's, it's very similar. We have all four fragments in both cases and even more so. So if we compare the fragment ion with the precursor ion ratio. So these are the ratios in the standard and here, and those are the ratios in the urine. And you see, so it's less than, in our criteria, uh, less than 25%. So we have a match of four parameters. Furthermore, with our method, we can distinguish isobaric compounds. So as I talked, so for, for, for which the uh, two parameters, for example, of retention time and uh, for, of retention time and accurate mass are uh, not enough. So all these compounds, so these are caffeine metabolites, so they have the same molecular formula, some same molecular mass. And if we uh, uh, look at their chromatograms on the column, they elute around the similar uh, retention time. So it's very difficult to distinguish it by those fragments. However, if we look into, the, into their fragments, so we can pick up at 30 electron volts, so each of the compound produces a specific fragment. So, uh, so in, in this case, 110 for one methylxanthine, and for example, uh, 150 for the seven methylxanthine. Now, if we look in the urine data acquired with the same method, so okay, so here we see the large peak of the precursor ion. So this could be any of these methylxanthines, but we cannot tell which one of it, which which one of the molecules is it. So, to and then by looking at the uh, fragmentation data, we can see that at 30 electron volts we get a rather uh, large peak, and we get uh, another smaller one at uh, at 150, which is corresponding to the one uh, to the one methylxanthine and seven methylxanthine. And indeed, checking in the literature, it has been already reported that uh, one methylxanthine is a major metabolite of uh, caffeine and seven methylxanthine is a minor metabolite. So I hope by this I can convince you that our method, so identification by more than two parameters, in our case, an ideal case four, we can increase the specificity of identification. Of course, it's still not absolute. Not all molecules can be distinguished in 
this way. And uh, always the biologists ask us, okay, fine, you have very nice method, but how many compounds can your platform detect in my biological samples? And there is no straightforward answer. It depends on the sample prep and uh, what is in your sample. However, let, let me give you some numbers for the plasma samples which were measured in our uh, laboratory. So currently in our in-house uh, spectral library, we have 413 compounds, so based from, H, uh, based from databases what has been reported in, 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 in human metabolome and what can be commercially purchased. And from these compounds, we could detect around 200. So roughly half, half and half of these compounds are polar and non-polar ones. So when I uh, blow up by the identification ranks, so so these are un uh, undetected compounds, so less than half in the library. And then we have a significant portion of the rank two with compounds which are confirmed by the retention time and the mess, frag mess fragments and the rank three compounds which we are quite sure about the identity of those compounds. So please note the number, so it's 100 compounds. It's not so much, so actually, people are then asking us, why not to do a targeted work with the triple quad uh, uh, instruments? We, you, we could get basically the same list of, co uh, of compounds and even more with, uh, with higher sensitivity. However, the, uh, it, and it depends if the experiment uh, if, uh, requires only the only a limited number of compounds and this is perhaps the way to go. However, we have developed the method in, in order to perform the discovery work, and it's not really possible, it's, it's, it's rather difficult to perform the discovery work with the triple quad. And I would like to move to the summary slide. Uh, so how our method can improve the uh, identification and uh, the specificity and um, still allow us to do the discovery work. So in the workflow, so let's start with the non-targeted metabolite profiling. So in this case, we can take the full scan uh, zero electron volts data. So we can process the data to the features list using uh, common metabolomic softwares. Then we can perform the data analysis based off on our scientific question, differences between the group or the time profiles. Then after seeing interesting or relevant features, we can do the database search based on the mass match, what metabolite could it be? And then by using uh, the, for example, the fragment data in the mass bank, we can look for those fragments in the 10 electron volts and 30 electron volts cans. So we are getting closer to, our, to the name of the metabolite, which we can later use in the connecting to the other omics. And this is the critical step, so we acquire the analytical standard to make sure uh, that we characterize it and that there is a, a, a match between the, um, be, between the analytical standard and the compound which we see in the biological sample. So in summary, we have a method which improves the identification of metabolites and at the same time, we are still able to do the untargeted metabolomic profiling from the same data set. And uh, I, I, I did not develop this method alone, so it's a teamwork uh, led by the, my PI, Greg Wheelock. Uh, most of the work was done by Shamanas, Hector, Gallard, uh, Arya, Stacey, Renke, and Caroline Mathan. And all of you, I would like to thank you for your attention. I would like to, uh, to welcome to ask me questions. Thank you.